Hey there, welcome to the Electronics Channel. I'm David Williams. In this video, I want to talk about IP addresses and subnet masks. In IP version 4, IP addresses like these ones here, along with the subnet masks, are used to determine the network that a computer is on. Now, what you see in this picture is two networks. We have one network on this side of the wireless ISR, or integrated switch and router, and then one network on this side. The networks are defined by this base network address and the subnet mask. And, and so over here also base network address and subnet mask. And the subnet mask in these cases is given by the slash notation, but it can also be given in a dotted decimal notation. And I'll show you the, those in a sec. But basically the slash notation tells in the subnet mask how many bits of the subnet mask are ones before you reach the first zero. So this combination of network address, or IP address, and subnet mask fully identifies the range of IP addresses that will be in a particular network. And for the purposes of this discussion, a network, like this one here, which can also become a subnet, is made up of all the devices that can communicate with each other without having to send the messages across a router. So this is one network, all of these devices including this side of the router, can communicate with each other without having to go across the router to what is a new network. In this video, I want to focus on the specific information that the combination of IP address and subnet mask can give you. And I think the easiest way of doing this is by working with an example. So here is an example of an IP address and a subnet mask. And this time I've written out the subnet mask in the dotted decimal format instead of in the slash format where I had slash 24 before. And again, that slash 24 indicates that I have 24 ones before the first zero. Because remember, both of these numbers are represented in computers as binary numbers and specifically 32-bit binary numbers. But in this dotted decimal notation, they're made more easily readable so that a human can look at it and not have to memorize it string of ones and zeros. Basically, what the subnet mask here does is it identifies which part of this IP address is for designating the network and which part is for designating the specific host within that network. And with this slash 24 notation, it's quite easy to do that without having to convert to binary. Oftentimes you would have to convert to binary to, to do this conversion, but everywhere that we have a 255 in one of these 8-bit blocks or one of these octets, that corresponds to the IP address part being for designating the network address. Whereas where I have the zero in the subnet mask, that octet in the IP address will be designating the specific host that's on the network. And the specific way that the subnet mask separates the host part and the network part is by performing a bitwise AND of all the bits in the subnet mask with all the bits in the IP address. So what I've done is I've converted the IP address and the subnet mask into binary form. So here's that IP address in binary form, 32-bit binary number, and here's that subnet mask in a 32-bit binary number. And I've kind of blocked it into the groups of, of octets again, and you can see the two five fives correspond to all ones, and then of course the zero correspond to all zero bits, and then 192 is this, 168 is this number, seven is this number, and one is this number. The bitwise AND goes bit by bit, performing an AND operation on each of those two bits and determining what the, what the result is. And that result is going to give us the network address. So what we're trying to determine right now is the network address. All devices on the same network will end up with the same network address when you do this operation. 1 ended with 1 is 1, 1 ended with 1 is 1, 0 ended with 1 is 0, and I continue this all the way down the line. So now that's my network address, and if I convert, I can convert this network address back into the dotted decimal format, and I get 192.168.7 dot zero. That's my network address. 
and you can see that no matter what number I put in here for the, for the last octet, I am always going to end up with this as the network address. And what that means is that this last octet designates the host. It gets masked off, it gets removed when we're trying to figure out the network address, but it's important when you're identifying the particular device on that network. So here's two more examples with IP addresses here and here that we will see are on the same network. When I do this bitwise anding, and I'm going to use shortcuts here, recognizing that the 255s are going to allow this octet from the IP address to pass through, I end up with 192.168.7, so that was for the ones, and then where I have zero in the subnet mask, that turns all of these bits into zeros. So my network address 192.168.7.0, just like it was in the previous IP address. And here, again, 192.168.7.0, same, same network address. These two devices would be on the same network. Because this last octet is an 8-bit number, I can use that information to figure out how many hosts, how many devices I could have on this network, and I can also figure out what the very first address is and what the very last address is. As an 8-bit number, that means I have 2 to the 8th different addresses or 256 different addresses. The first address, which starts with, the, which is the 0 here, is the network address. The last address is 192.168.7.0. All ones, which is 255. So the last address on this particular network that we've got figured out right here is 255. And for any network, that last address has a special designation as the broadcast address. And what that means is that any message that's sent out to this particular address is sent to all devices that are on that network. One thing that you may have noted is that within the range of addresses that I can represent with the last eight bits, I have 256 different values. The first value is the zero, and that's the network address, so that actually cannot be assigned to a device. And the last address is 255, and that's the broadcast address. And again, that can't be assigned to any particular device. So for this particular network, even though I have 256 addresses that, I, that are available, the first one and the last one are not assignable to a device. That means I can have 254 hosts on this particular network. It's the number of addresses minus 2 to give me 254 different hosts as a maximum. And of course I don't have to have 254 hosts on this network. It's just that I can support that many. So put together this combination of IP address and subnet mask can tell us a number of different things. One, it can tell us the network address like we just calculated. Two, it can tell us how many bits there are for defining host devices. Based on that number of bits, we can calculate how many different hosts are available for the devices. Also, we can figure out what is the range of assignable IP addresses. That's basically going to be one more than the network address up to one less than the last address. And the last address is the broadcast address. So that network address can be determined by doing this bitwise AND between the IP address and the subnet mask. The number of bits for defining the host devices is simply the number of zero bits there are in the subnet mask. The number of hosts that we can assign with that number of host device bits is going to be 2 to the number of zero bits minus 2 because we need one of those addresses for the network address, one for the broadcast address. Then, like I just mentioned, the range of assignable IP address will be one more than the network address, up to one less than the broadcast address. And the broadcast address is the last address within the subnet. Okay, let's do an example where we are given an IP address and a subnet mask. And we need, from these two pieces of information, we can figure out all of these things. For this particular subnet mask, We've got all ones for the first three octets here, and then we have 240. So in order to, to do the bitwise anding, these three octets are easy. It's just going to be the 192.168.100 b 
because those octets are going to just fall through. But then the bitwise AND of 240 and 25, well, we, we probably want to convert those into binary to do that. 25 equals 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. And 240 equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 0, 0, 0. Now the bitwise AND of this is going to give me 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. And then converting this binary number back into decimal gives me the last octet of this network address. And that will be dot 16. How many host bits do we have? Well, it's the zero, so we've got four host bits. How many hosts do we have? Well, we will have two to the power of four minus two, which is 14. The first host address is one more than the network address. So that is 192.168.100.17. The last host address will be one less than the broadcast address, and the broadcast address will be 16 plus the value you can make with four bits, which is 15. So we have 15 more than the network address is the broadcast address. So that is 192.168.100.31, which means my last host address is 192.168.100.31. Here's another example where I have an IP address 128.107.14.191 and a subnet mask 255.255.252.0. The places where I have 255s in the subnet mask are easy for figuring out the network mask. 128.107. The zero is easy, so the last one will be a dot zero. So I've dot something dot zero. Now again, I can take the 14 and I can take the 252 and convert those into binary. 14, of course as an 8-bit number is 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. And 252 as an 8-bit number is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. And we do this bitwise AND operation, and we can see we've got 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. Convert this number back into binary. That's a 12, so we'll have dot 12, dot zero. How many host bits do we have? Well, that's the number of zeros we have in the subnet mask. So we have eight for this octet, and then nine, 10. So it's a 10 total host bits. The number of hosts will be two to the 10th to give us the number of total addresses. So we have to subtract two, one for the network address, and then one for the broadcast address. 2 to the 10th is 1,024, minus 2 gives me 1,022 different hosts that I can have on this computer. The first host is one more than the network address, 128.107.12.1. Now the easiest way to figure out the broadcast address is to identify when all, what the value is when all of the host bits are 1. Now the 128.107 part is easy. The 14 will actually not be 14 because the well, for, there, there's 14 in binary, but this least significant bit here will also be a 1. So we have dot 15 dot 255. So you get the broadcast address, which will be where all the host bits, so all these 8 plus the last 2 of this octet to be 1. And finally, the last host address will be one less than the broadcast address. So 128.107.15.1. Okay, let's do one more example, and this is an interesting example, simply because this is the smallest network that you can make. So figure out the network address. We got 255, 255, 255, so those first three octets will just pass through as they are, 172.30.10. The last octet, well, we'll take 130 and 252 and convert them into binary and then do the bitwise anding. So I get 1, 1, 0, and 252 is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. What do I end up with? 1 ended with 1 is 1. These are all ended with zeros, so they are all zeros. And convert that back into decimal is 128. 
How many host bits do I have? Well, it's the zero bits. I only have two of them. How many hosts do I have? Well, it's two to the power of the number of host bits minus two. Two squared minus two is equal to two. I only have two hosts that I can have on this particular network. So the first, and the first one will be one more than the network address, 172.30.10.129. And the last one will be the next address, 172.30.10.130. And the broadcast address is the last address in this range, where all of the bits, the last two bits, the last two host bits in the, in the network address are 1. And that will be 172.30.10.131. OK, well, I hope this helps with your understanding of how the IP address and subnet mask can help you determine a whole bunch of things about the network, the network address, the range of assignable hosts, the broadcast address, how many hosts you can assign. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.